Okay. Lecture three. Okay, lecture three. Uh, there are common natures of angels. Okay. At least that I have written on this board. Then, of course, in lecture four, I will give you more detail. Okay, step by step. Now, here, these angels are, as you know, spirit beings. That means that spirit beings means that you. We cannot touch it because it's not a physical being. Not only touching, we cannot even touching, we cannot even see. We cannot even see them in our physical eyes. Okay? Unless you are spiritually inspired because later we will study more on, on Satan. Okay, Satan also is a spirit being. Okay? Many times Satan appears to you in your spiritual eyesight as if they are a real good angel. Okay? Many times they will deceive you unless you are spiritually well trained, building up the good spiritual eyesight. We will go over that issue later. Now, of course, here they are spirit beings, but sometimes they God allow them to incarnate themselves into human being, physical being. There are some Bible stories uh, on that issue. When they appeared in the human form, uh, often we cannot make distinctions between real human and angelic being. Unless you are spiritually filled, uh, able to distinguish between. So here, since they are spirit beings, but they possess, because that they are being, okay? So they possess the same characters as us. Same nature as us, meaning they possess knowledge, emotion, and willpower. Willpower means they make their own decision. Okay, when when Jesus commanded them to do, they have to follow, or if they do not follow, then Disobedience, you know, Lucifer disobeyed. After using their own free will, rebellion against God's will. Therefore, these spirit beings at least possess, possesses knowledge, emotion, and willpower. So you share with this knowledge with your people. Okay. Now, they are second nature of, they are serving spirit being. That's their primary, primary job, primary purpose of their existence. It's a primary purpose of God's creation of angel. Okay? Angel's primary main job is to serve, serve God, Trinity God, 
not only that, but also serves God's children eternally. Okay, not only in in the paradise above, but also while we are in this world, that they are servants of God and servants of Christians. So they are not equal with us in, in position. Okay, we are their masters. We are their lords. They are, they are our slaves, servants. Are you clear on this? Okay. Now, in terms of their population, angelic population, there are at least three Bible references teaching us that the numbers are very, very many. Here in Hebrews 12, verse 22, expressed innumerable, that terminology, innumerable, you translate that in your own language. That means countless. We cannot count because of their numbers are great, too many, innumerable. That's an English expression. Hebrews chapter 12, 22. And also, in Revelation 5, 11, John saw these angelic beings praising and worshiping and glorifying Jesus. He saw that scene, okay, in John chapter 5. And Revelation chapter 5, 11, expressed in this way, 10,000 times 10,000, and also it's a thousand of thousand. So we cannot just uh, count literally, okay? That shows innumerable, so many. Revelation Chapter 5, 11. Okay? Not only that, Luke 2, 13. Luke 2, 13. Luke chapter 2, 13 is very well known. You know, uh, when Jesus, right after Jesus born, the multitude of multitude of heavenly hosts Praising the baby. Look, saw that. Okay? Multitude, multitude, praising baby. You know the shepherd, shepherd in the field? Remember the shepherd story? In chapter 2. Okay? So that all this shows us that angelic populations is countless, okay, so many. So we are so blessed by the fact that we have quite a many countless servants uh, behind us. Amen? Yeah. So they are gift for us, okay, from our Lord Jesus. Now, in the Bible, some places, like Genesis 18, 19 story, this is the uh, Genesis 18, 19 story, it's a very simple story, very famous story. Remember? Three persons visited Abraham in chapter 18. Later, one person out of three was who? Jesus, who temporarily incarnated into human form in order to meet Abraham. That's why John chapter 8, 
56-59, Jesus said, I met Abraham. John chapter 8, 56 to 59. Jesus, 30 years old Jesus, expressed that I met Jesus 2,000 years ago. The Jewish people was very angry at him because how could you, 30 years old carpenter from Nazareth, met our such a famous father 2,000 years ago, how could you meet our such a famous father? Then Jesus replied back to them that I existed before the Abraham, he said. That. And they tried to kill Jesus. John chapter 8, verses 56 all the way to 59. So don't forget that. Okay? Here, Jesus at the time in Genesis 18 incarnated into human form temporarily to meet Abraham along with two angels. Those two angels were also incarnated into full human form in order to what? In order to destroy Sodom. So two angels came down to visit Abraham to destroy the Sodom. Okay? Therefore, chapter 19, verse 1 says, two angels, those two men were two angels. See, so angelic being is so powerful. Uh, now, here in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2, he told, the Hebrew writer Paul wrote to Hebrew Christians in the first century, telling them this, Often you entertain strangers, Okay, that could be angel incarnated into human form. Therefore, you will not know when you encounter with people, sometimes it, poor people, beggars, okay, begging for uh, your help, you should be very sensitive to that, you know, that person would be incarnated human. Now, incarnated angel into humanity. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2. Even today, that could be happen. So we should be aware of that. Angel can be incarnated into humanity to perform certain duties given by God. So I have given you two references right here, at least. Okay? So remember that? Now, in Matthew 22, 30, taught us that Angels, are, they do not marry. Okay? And we see angels' average age, you see, is about 30 plus minus, around that young youth age. Some people said, you know, baby angels as well, but Bible did not say about the baby angels. Those angelic beings normally are mature, young, age, male, not female, no female. So they do not marry. 
Here, Matthew 22, 30. And also, you know, especially those uh, Roman Catholic uh, dominant countries, like the Philippines, for instance, they, they esteem angels very highly. Okay, that is not a Bible teaching. Therefore, you Filipinos, you should be fully trained in the area of this angel, uh, you know, biblical uh, angel nature. And be, because Paul said that some people in Colossians churches worshiping angels, uh, which is not uh, acceptable. The, but these angels, since they are creatures, okay, their knowledge is limited. The angel will not know everything. Here, Matthew 24, 36, Jesus said this, even angels would not know exact time and hour of my second coming. Matthew 24, 36. Sometimes we say, wow, angel would know. No, even Jesus said, even angels would not know. They are just uh, order takers. Okay? Whatever order Jesus would give, they just uh, take those orders and to follow okay, what the Lord Jesus commanding to do. Even 1 Peter 1.12 also said that angels will not know everything. They, their knowledge is very limited. So we know far better than angels. You see, in Peter, 1 Peter 1.12 said that angels will not know deep inside of uh, mystery of salvation. Okay, the Christian doctrines, we know as we search for studying, we know in depth, profound uh, mystery of doctrine of gospel, but angels would not know much about. They are simply a memory of the other takers. So don't consider angels are great and knowing everything, possessing almighty power, especially those Roman Catholic background people believing in angels in that way. That is a violation of what? Vertical commandment. Now, normally angels were wearing white cloth. You know, here, angel visited tomb of Jesus in white cloth. John described that. And Mary the Magdalene saw angels with white cloth. Okay, we wear white cloth as well because of the, the blood of Jesus cleanses, cleansed our sins. But those who are sharing the gospel, as many people as possible, will be, will be shining, shining. So white cloth with the bright shining. Special Christians. But all Christians will wear white cloth like angels. Okay? I told you they are male. Old Testament, here in Job chapter 1 6 and Job chapter 2 1, calls in a very special uh, title Angels are the sons of God. Okay? Only, only 
in the Old Testament here in Job, chapter 1, 6 and chapter 2, 1. Sons of God. So we biblical scholars, we consider the Old Testament expression of angels. In, there are many different expressions, but we over here, Job described the angels, the sons of God, plural. It's just not a capital letter S, it's a small letter S. So it's just for your reference, okay, when the sons of God recorded in the Old Testament, that refers to what? Angelic being. Okay? So I have given you a short lessons on the nature, common nature of angelic being. So in the chapter lesson four, I will give you a little more uh, uh, information, updated information. Okay? So we will see how the Holy Spirit will guide us.